Ladies and gentlemen, channel your energy one last time for the teams that are about to enter the arena here for HCC China. It is going to be the A team facing off Team Nut. And with that series finished and concluded, that also means we won't have any more regular league play, Tetcher, until the playoffs to, uh, next, almost at tomorrow, next week. There we go. That is correct. We will not have any more regular league play. Playoffs then will decide which of our Chinese teams goes to the Eastern Clash to join up with their Korean overlords and see if we can maybe fell some giants. Absolutely true. Well said. And look at the predictions coming in from our Chinese colleagues, Mafao and Nova. They are all leaning over towards A team, taking this in a clean 2 0. Oh. I don't disagree with them, especially if Seven Milk is still falling into that support role, filling right. in for Faye, who might still be away. I would also be very much behind the A team here. And you know what? Who am I to disagree with you and uh, two of our Chinese colleagues? I'm going to join you. And I think the A team has done so much work. They've put in so much research and preparation into, uh, you know, facing their opponents as of late. So I think they definitely have what it takes to make this a 2-0 and uh, crush the dreams of Team Nut, causing a little bit of an upset there. Let's find out. And we're also going to be able to find out once we see the teams with Team Nut being introduced first, whether in fact it is going to be Seven Milk still hanging around. As Let's find out. Heading straight over to Team Nut, in fact. And it is there going is. to be Seven Milk. Filling in for Faye, who is still away. And my my belief in the a team strengthens yeah and for those of you who are wondering like i've seen this question arise many times um not just today but also during the previous play days what these numbers underneath the player names mean these are um role specific numbers so depending on which role the player is filling whether it's tank support or dps it means uh damage healing or tanking done on average per game it does, but here we see players being highlighted here. The key position for Team Nut, Aitui. Usually the support player, but being forced onto a role swap due to Seven Milk coming in. He is playing the offlaner for his team and has been doing a pretty spectacular job in all honesty. Yeah, I mean, Aitui, he's a pretty experienced player in HCC China. And as such, you know, the role swap isn't really the hardest thing for him to do compared to some of the other more inexperienced players. I think that would have been a way bigger deal. So I can totally see him sacrificing himself, you know, for the team and saying, yeah, I got this, guys. Just let me go in on that uh, offlane melee flex role. Because quite quite honestly, Tetra, I think this is one of the harder roles to actually play really well. And here we see the A team with Jaina, Olele, Bruiser, Stukov, and Kaitu. Kaitu, of course, the brand new tank, basically full time now for the team, at least until the end of the year, where I, we will see if they do reevaluate due to the tank for the first part of the phase. Uncle G being removed from all season play for the rest of the year due to an altercation in the player area by the HTC management. Exactly. So, Kaitu, also a familiar face in the HCC China region. He's definitely gonna, gonna do his best to support his boys on that endeavor here to take down Team Nut because a victory, not only in terms of points, but also I think in terms of, you know, those success moments, the mental fortitude, it would mean so much for the A team to have a little bit of a moment of success here. Also to prepare them, of course, for the upcoming playoffs. And if you look at it on paper, That's this so is probably the closest matchup we've had all day long. The stats are very even between these two. Slight lead for the A team in terms of what's the second stat? That is a uh, uh, second stat should be takedowns on average per game. So higher average takedowns, but the KDA is better for Team Nuts. So they have had a better kill death ratio, have died mm -hmm. less times. So exactly. here we have the A team. You can see they actually snuck in a one-one versus RPG earlier. Very well deserved. Whereas Team Nuts. They've been on a losing streak for a while, unfortunately, and the majority of their wins came in the first rotation. All right, Dragonshire, ladies and gentlemen. I think this could be our first game of Dragonshire for the day, and uh, I'm quite excited to see that here. Was it taken by A-Team? Let's see. I think it was taken by the A-Team. This was an A-Team map. Good. So it is going to be Team Nuts with the first ban. What are we going to see? What is the most effective? Effective first pick, first ban. I doubt we're going to see any five assassin bans. Well, we might, but 
At least they'll pick one first. They're going to start off banning out the Yorel. Very sensible. The A-team mm -hmm. have actually run her a fair amount, I believe. I will double check on that, but my brain's telling me A-team Yorel equals yay. Yeah, and of course, we also know that uh, Team Nuts No is such a formidable Genji player, so uh, no yeah. big surprise here to see that one getting banned out. And a good old Sergeant Hammer ban on Dragonshire, because why not? Yeah. It's uh, such a good hero, especially if put on one of those side lanes. You know, it's really hard to gank into her sometimes. So definitely a good ban by the A-team, especially if they want to play a more standard, more regular game without those Hammer shenanigans. And it is, in fact, that the A-team have been playing a lot of URL, so I was correct in my assumption. Mm -hmm. Team Nuts starting off with the Phoenix, going to potentially be going into that, once again, Purification Salvo build. This is not really a good map for a uh, Planet Cracker, unfortunately. Yeah. And Diablo Malfurion, a very standard style for the A-team and a good things to remove away from a Phoenix con, but I'm quite surprised Malfurion over Deckard Kane. I guess they just have a personal preference because Deckard would make more sense to remove away from a Phoenix con. Yeah, but then again, uh, like speaking of supports, right? I'm so excited to see what Team Nut is going to pick here. Looks like it is the Deckard Kane as Tetra uh, alluded to. Now, the reason why I'm looking forward to seeing the support play by Team Nut is because of Seven Milk, right? How much was he able to improve? Uh, from one play day to the other. Maybe they did some replay analysis together. Maybe they gave him a little bit of coaching there as well. Because yesterday, if I recall correctly, he was playing the Lucio. Didn't really look that good. He's played Lily in the past. Didn't look that well either. So, uh, yeah, with the Decker Kane, I think you can actually play a little more passively while still getting your heals out. So, compare that to a Lucio, who's actually very challenging mechanics-wise. I think this is a much safer choice. And you are correct. So, we will see how well he's able to do it. Um, or perhaps they put him on the solo lane. Who knows? Maybe we're going to see a seven milk thrall. But <laughs> for now, like we, like we already said, uh, the milk the milkman Deckard Kane there was one of his better ones, like you did say. So no issue with them putting seven milk onto that. All right, we called the milkman yesterday. Damage. I almost forgot. He is the milkman, which is still my favorite name for the world's worst superhero. <laughs> Hey, oh and Jimmy is back in action, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Yeah. With quite a few slows. It's a pretty good setup here for, with that Rainer. That building themselves a Phoenix comp, just once again, using the Rainer to replace the Phoenix. Now, here's the difference between the two. Phoenix, the whole idea is slowing down people, getting the Purification Salvo and bursting them down. Rainer, the whole idea is slowing individual people and just blasting them. He is an individual hero assassin. So here's the response. The Cassia coming in here for the team Nut. So a mage is going to be needed for yeah. the A-team, someone who can deal with that Cassia. I was going to say exactly the same thing, right? There's still one assassin slot to be taken for the A-team. And I think you mentioned a mage. I, I would totally agree with you, I think. Heroes like Golden, Li Ming, those are all fabulous tools to deal with Akasia, especially when Akasia is getting a little overzealous because she thinks she's so tanky against the Jimmy that she tends to forget about all the other heroes that could maybe harm her. Even a Blaze, to be honest, is pretty darn good with that consistent fire damage. Good to see. Now then, with Li Ming as the final pick, you have to look and see and ask yourself, are there any kind of spell shields? The answer is yes, the Royal can take a spell shield. Cassia cannot. Phoenix can, I believe, or I believe he gets a spell shield as long as he has his shield active, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not really the most common of talents, but it could be a, a worthwhile investment. That's for sure. Yeah, Cassia doesn't have any spell armor, uh, any spell yeah. damage reduction because it's part of her kit, right, to be that hardcore physical counter. But uh, her one weakness... That is ability damage. If they if they added, let's say, a spell shield, for example, with some sort of spell protection, I think that hero could easily snowball out of control. That it could. So then, with Cassia on the board, that's going to be a fair amount of poke damage. She can get armor reduction later on. So that I wouldn't correct. actually mind seeing Rayna go for the Behemoth armor. But that might just be a personal preference for myself. Uh, here, honestly, though, Tetra, like, like I agree with you. Like I, I like the Behemoth armor quite a bit more, especially since it scales so well with Adrenaline Rush. So let's see which route the Rainer of the A team is going to go this time around, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready for that first game on Dragonshire between the A team and Team Nut. 
and the nuts we're going to uh, introduce to you with no on that Phoenix FS is playing the Garage 7 Milk and Thrall Oasis on the Cassia and Atui back of the support on Decker Kane. So I was right. It is the 7 Milk on the solo laner here. He's going to have his work cut out for him as the A team. Jaina on the Lee Ming. Olele on the Rainer. Bruiser on the St on the Blaze. Stukov on Mafurian and Kaitu on his favorite. It's the Diablo. Now, Tetra, is that good news? For the A team, I'm oh, not no. sure what I was, what I'm supposed to think about this role swap coming in for Team Nut here. Not only is it a little weird to put the weaker player on the more impactful role, but also doing that in the last play day where everything comes down to getting a better position for the playoffs. Okay, well here's what it, for starters. I am glad. I feel glad in for Team Nut in that the A team that Solana is Blaze. If that Solana had been like Malthael. Mm -hmm. Or if they'd even got that Yorel, then oh, I would have yeah. called GG the second I would have seen Seven Milk on that throne. Because yeah. it would have been an absolute massacre. But because it's Blaze, they might get away with this. Blaze is going to have a rough time killing Thrall, and all Thrall has to do is to stay up there, get XP. By the same token, though, if I were to scout out the lane distribution here for Team Nut. If I were A-team, I would go for a gank on 7 milk over and over again. Try to really punish mm -hmm. the quote-unquote um, lack of experience that they could have, you know? But by the same token, maybe they are actually expecting this and telling 7 milk to play super carefully. Atui no longer providing milk, instead providing, and once again, normal potions. We will miss the milkman as FS. Takes a little bit of damage from Kaisu, but he's trying to hold the line as that camp's pretty low. The A team looking to seal it, and with that arcane orb, Oasis decides it's not worth staying around and will back up. Yeah, and the reason why Team Nut didn't contest this, of course, was the fact that Thrall and Excuse me, and Phoenix were clearing this bruiser camp all together. So they were severely outmanned and outgunned in that situation here. So no casualties in terms of heroes for Team Nut, but the mercenary camp in the bottom goes over to the A team. And Team Nut trying to force the issue down onto the bot lane. We get the channel, which will prevent the Dragon the Dragon Knight from happening. They at least neutralize. Oasis. Took off the point. Kai to Oasis is no, in danger. Mind, Atui. Yeah, Atui is in even more danger. That's the opposite of where you want to be, Atui. But the damage from Cassia Oasis giving Atui a way out as she did so much damage mm -hmm. to Olele and Stukov that they were forced to retreat and gave Atui a way out. Now Kaitu going in for FS, trying to burn him down, but Indomitable prevents that from happening. Yeah, and that is the beauty of playing Decker Kane in those moments, right? When the enemy team doesn't have a lot of burst damage, but instead tries to chip you down slowly but surely. With that Rainer, for example, you're going to have your heals up all the time. And that 10 armor that you get as long as you're in an allied hero nearby is also going to help out there as well. And Team Nut, to be honest, Tetra, they're playing this pretty well. Even 7 Milk in the top lane is having a really good time against Blaze. He really is. He's trying to... He's been able to hold that at least. They're going to try and go for a channel. The, oh, one arcane missile makes it through. Mm -hmm. And Blaze re-channels top. Prevents it going over to Team Nut, at least for the moment. The A-team still putting on the pressure. There's the toss onto Kaitu. As he tries to force his way back through. But the scroll is ceiling. And Atui is back on support, baby, as they pick up first blood. Yeah, and the problem here, quite honestly, was the fact that, you know, there oh wasn't God, really... Milk. What? Uh, seven milk, excuse me. That, <laughs> turning on the heat. Turns on the heat on the blaze. So Against the blaze, I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, here's Jaina, though, dodges, and Seven Milk just pulls back. <laughs> nice and safe. All right, playing it safely up to this point, and I'm liking it quite a bit. Now, I was going to say, like, the, the main problem here for the A-team, I feel like, is the fact that Diablo doesn't really get the best synergy with Malfurion so far. He's had a couple of overpowers in which the Entangled Root either missed or was cast too late, and as such, these early pickoffs that they were trying to go for they hadn't had the value that they wanted to. So now then, you see both teams once again beginning to rotate, trying to put pressure. The Bruiser Camp in the bot lane being taken by Team Nut. There is no vision and no awareness of this, or at least no sign of awareness of this by the A team. So this will be taken without any kind of contestion here. However, Raider, not knowing about this, he finally realized that where is everyone in my aggressive lane? Teleport. And has gone onto the point. The very aggressive teleport. Garrosh Indomitables through the root, tosses no win. Aleli self heals. The healing reduction denies it, but Raina delayed enough time that the A team picks up the first Dragon Knight.
And Rainer, the hero, Team A team, needs and deserves in that moment here. Well done here. That Dragon Knight goes over to the A team. It's already melting down those towers in the middle. Kicks away the garage for now. And, uh, you know, Jimmy once again going with a slightly different build. Uh, so far, every Rainer has had their own, you know, individual flavor to it. Goes for the heavy slugs at level 7. So an increased oh, yeah. width on that Q, which makes for easier targeting and easier uh, synergy as well with that paint them red at level 16 with the self heal because if you hit more then you're gonna heal more and it also slows so it more also slows. synergy with the ace in the hole awesome now then we're seeing lots of pressure onto this tower will be taken down already the towers in the mid lane were also dropped quite low but finally the dragon knight expires and rainer and Li Ming will finish off the final remaining tower xp though team nut thanks to the three kills they got earlier are still holding even that is correct, and uh, that's really something they need, I feel like. In in terms of raw team fighting, we haven't really had our, our first true like five versus five team fight, right? But up to this point in these early skirmishes, especially near those uh, siege giants, it looked to me like A team was having a little bit of an upper hand, but only when they separate and only when they uh, start to get picked isolatedly, that's when Team Matt could really shine here. FS, look at that invade, just scouting out the perimeter. Diablo Kaitu not brave enough to actually make anything happen against Garage. FS, very fast reactions. Kaitu shows immediate toss into Groundbreaker. He has got Warbreaker as well, so we do know. So he is going to be gaming, uh, gaining stacks this entire time. Oh, yes. The W build is so good on the Diablo. You can still build in, you know, a couple of Q towns, especially on 13 and 16, where you go for a cooldown reset on your Shadow Charge. Uh, after using Overpower, for example, an extra bonus damage if you slam someone into the wall. So, uh,. You don't have to fully commit to that W uh, build, but it's usually the go-to that we see anyway, simply because of all the utility it adds later on with the damage production, you know, and the spell power for Diablo as well. It's so useful. Now, 7 Milk, once again, the target of the gank. Overpower is good. Roots are okay. The body blocks are not good, however. But he tanks through all of that damage with the power of Calcium, and he is still sustained. He's got those hard bones, and he isn't even New York, as he sends in a little bit more lightning, forcing Kaitu to back up, but he did burn Earthquake for that. Yeah, Earthquake is a significant cooldown. You're perfectly right. So not trading any heroic abilities for a long cooldown heroic ability like Earthquake. It's definitely a nice little victory for the A-team. Cassia completely left unattended. When is A team going to rotate towards the bottom? I think the fountain survived actually, which is a cute little detail. The fountain being alive is not a, just a cute detail, but a big deal. It is finally dead as we see them focusing on to Diablo, who uh -oh. drops the lightning breath point blank. D goes down, but at least he did a fair amount of damage. But now Jada, all alone down here, but Diablo, full souls, seven milk. He needs to survive. He needs to make like the next level of milk, and that is butter, and somehow slip away, but he goes down. That butter was too hard, not yet melted. <laughs> it was too hot indeed. And you can really see the value of that raider, by the way, as well. You know, the relentless chase was real. The slows were good as well, and as such, the bonus damage from Jimmy was more than enough to actually destroy the thrall this time, who didn't have Earthquake. Maybe with that being online, he could have Got into safety yet again, and look at that mighty push going in. The ban, uh, the Rainer Banshee helping out here as well. Kaito, unfortunately, getting caught yet oh, again. Dear. The main tank dead once more for the A-team. Did he give his life for a good cause, though? Can the A-team maybe sneak and steal away that Dragon Knight? He was but small dibbles with no scar here with no souls available. Now we see the A-team beginning to put some pressure onto FS. They're trying to drive him back, give them the opportunity to go for the Dragon Knight. But Cassia, already rotating down for Team Nut, gains control of bot lane again. And this is going to at least prevent the Dragon Knight from being channeled. Mm -hmm. There we go. We see the nice uh, target switch by the Banshee here, going from Garrosh, who was very tanky, onto the Phoenix, who was in a much better position. Oh, Rainer needs to be careful. Though whenever the Banshee takes damage, by the way, the healing process, the passive healing, is interrupted. It's very, very similar, actually identical to the second wind of Murden. Now we're level 13, available for the A-team. It will be here soon for Team Nut. They're going to be picking up mostly usual talents here. We're going to see the fuel leak. Actually, no, is that the uh, that's the armor fuel leak level 16, isn't it, for Blaze? I believe so. Yeah. This should be the jet propulsion uh, oil spill. So whenever he's using that engage, he's basically carrying that oil trail right behind him. So, so that's level 13? I thought that was the 16. Oh, was or 16? am I just completely mistaken? Uh, I thought this was the armor and cooldown reduction one. That could also the be the case, yeah. Not a main blaze here. 
I, I mean either. I will I will search that a little bit later. Marina going for the debilitating no, the round on here. 13. There we go. So we were correct. Hurrah. So the debilitating rounds coming in here, the extra 20% slow on the queue of Reyna and the cooldown reduction as we see FS getting slowed by the blaze. The roasted. Ref FS gets so Oh my god, still getting hit by everything. Arcade Orb still not enough for the kill, but a team able to guarantee that fort. And there's only one fort left for Team Nush, and that's in the mid lane. Already, that pressure is starting to get a little real here against Team Nut. Not only did they lose the top fort before, but also the bottom fort now has been melted. Mercenary control going over to the A team as well. Now, it's actually intriguing and interesting to see how both teams neglected any form of global, right? Tetra on Dragon Shard, so it's very unusual for us to yeah. be like, oh, where's the Haka? Where's Falstead? Oh, nobody's going to take that train, so rotations are going to take a little longer. Diablo goes in for no, but he immediately teleports away. Scroll of Ceiling is good, and the tool was better. Raider gets deleted. And as such, that is a nice kill by a team. No, they're able to take positioning in the center of the map, and we are seeing Phoenix rotating to bot lane. Blaze, though, quick reaction. Straight up to top lane. Going to try and prevent this Draconite from going Kaidu. over. But Kaitu, now in trouble, uses a Tui as an escape, but with the ball lightning coming in, Kaitu tanking through. Ball lightning doesn't actually get that many bounces because of that charge that Kaitu gave, and he will actually escape. All right, they're going to fight back here, or are they going to try to make something happen here? Jaina on the Li Ming, lots of damage being dealt here. But there was a little bit of a mistake here by Kaitu on Diablo, right? Because he saw Blaze rotating all the way up to uh, that shrine, but he also saw the Li Ming orb connect on the Phoenix, right? So you thought it was his time to shine, lock down the Phoenix, try to get a kill done. But by doing so, he completely forgot that Jimmy was in no condition to fight, in no position to fight even. The roots are good, but the Unstoppable is better by Garrosh. Jimmy is now in condition to fight, though. He has returned. Absolutely. And we're going to see the A-team actually somehow, despite being a hero down, manage the double channel here. So yeah. Team Nuts put, uh, spent their time instead doing a bruiser camp. Seven Milk, though, will rotate up here immediately and prevent a Dragonite from being channeled. But the A-team once again piling on the pressure and still with a very, very slight XP lead. Yeah, it's basically them trying to catch someone you know, separated from the rest of their team. They were trying to find a single nut here to maybe initiate a series of staggered deaths. Beautiful escape this time by Kai too. The fight is basically going all over the place. Old Lady needs to be careful too. He's all by himself there. Scroll of Ceiling being a great zoning tool here, making it much harder for the A-team to move in when they would, uh, as much as they would wish to here. The Banshee comes in, actually eats a little bit of Lightning Fury damage and some Lightning from Thrall. So that will actually go down here, Cassia, Almost dropping it to zero hit points. That actually not looking healthy. Yeah, it's, it's a weird, weird positioning, isn't it? Like, uh, they're scattered all over yeah. the place. Multiple fights are happening on multiple fronts right now. And Kaito, unfortunately, trying so hard to make something happen. But he needs to be on the Dragon Shrine point, on the altar, right? They want to get that channel through. Kaito needs to body block and keep the enemies away. That's it. Oh, Lele, I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. The distraction nice. and Oasis. He desperately tries to get in range, but the body blocks from Bruiser are good as they move forward. Diablo's oh. got souls, and down goes Cassia. Deck had punted away, so there was no healing. And despite the incident of free attempt from FS, we still see Cassia getting taken out. In the meantime, Blaze rotating up, trying to protect this top four, which is an okay move. You know, the Dragonite at this point is not strong enough to really enforce a keep core or core call. Right, so they might as well just try to extend their lead and gear up for that late game with the level 20. I wonder how much they can get done, though. I think they're playing this a little too passive right now. I don't think there needs to be four, three members of 18 guarding the Dragon Knight. Instead, they could have actually tried to rotate middle or top and put a little pressure up there. Good tackle onto Garrosh. Indomitable immediately popped. Tanking through. A little bit of extra damage via that uh, Groundbreaker as well. And here comes Blaze. Looks like they're going to use this 30% hit, 30 hit point Dragon Knight to try and push in for the keep wall. And of course, it dies. Yeah, the gate is down one tower as well. The Banshee, brave as it is, absorbs a couple of those tower shots. But as it is now, that means no additional damage coming in from Jimmy and Kaitu. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of damage from 7 milk though. Jaina with a sharp shooting orbs and missiles over the wall. Yeah, that uh, Li Ming from Jaina is doing a lot of damage when it's given the chance, but it's being played around pretty well, actually. A lot of uh, orbs are being absorbed very close range by Garrosh, which is really nice to see. The question is, can they continue that? And Seven Milk 
We were concerned. So far, I have absolutely no doubts that he's doing completely fine, at least for the yep. moment. But he needs to be prepared to join his team in this fight, which will likely be happening soon. We see uh -oh. 16 to 70. Kaitu wrapping around from goes. one side. Gets thrown in. Remember, he's got full souls, but he's still absolutely deleted. Stukov wrapped around by himself. He will get salvoed. Icebox in, but he's still completely alone and will get taken out. That is a two for zero. Diablo will come back due to full souls, yeah. but that was a nightmare for, t for the A-team there. And quite honestly, you can't engage like that, right? I mean, it's it's cool to maybe go for that mercenary camp steal, but first of all, if you're already arriving that late, you cannot hope to find a perfect angle like that. And if you can't find a perfect angle, well, let this, let this mercenary, camp, mercenary camp go through, right? You can defend it. You just wait until it reaches the fort or the keep, respectively, in the bottom lane. It's not like this mercenary camp will end the game all by itself. But now that you have actually staggered deaths and Diablo has lost all of its souls, now the mercenary camp is actually starting to become a real problem. Before that, it would have been very easy to actually get rid of. Beautiful lockdown. Nice. Though. The knockback and the Into wave the keep. of force. Getting so much damage into the keep, into the fray, into the charge. Good charge in here by Bruiser. Looking for a 2E, but the slow and the anti-healing is good. Here comes the scroll of ceilings. They begin chasing onto FS. They will burn him down with his shield. Bruiser can turn around reset. if they need to. Jaina gets the reset, but Noah's teleported away. A 2E is too far away, but that is a wonderfully timed double kill. That is a huge saving grace for get the, the shrine. Jaina, get the shrine. There we go. Jaina's getting it. Okay. Whew. Yeah, so as you said, right, A-Team came back at the perfect time here. Now, they, they gave it a little bit away here when they were trying to fight for that bottom mercenary camp, but fortunately for them, Team Not also with a big blunder there, especially by Kasi actually getting knocked back by that wave of force into the keep range. Um, super good to have the slow on an immobile ranged assassin like Kasia. And now another Dragon Knight in possession for the A-Team. How much can they do with it this time? The previous Dragon Knight yeah. was pretty much whiffed for the most part. Just bring the team this time. Bring the bring everyone in. Let's see if they can make something happen. They're gonna head to bot lane straight away. Li actually looks like mid lane is gonna be the lane of choice. All right. Uh, with the double bruiser in the top lane, they're gonna try and put as much pressure onto mid lane as possible while Phoenix is clearing top because it is gonna be a four versus five. As they take out the entire front wall, Oasis goes for a ride, and this fountain shall immediately die. And then it's all about the question of the keep. 54 seconds, 78% health on the Dragon Knight as they begin burning through this keep. All right, punting away the garage here. Sorry, the thrall. All orcs look the same to me. And that is enough to actually take down this middle keep. And the Dragon Knight is still sitting at 52% health. I think if they do this nice uh, detour here around the bush and then try to siege up for the bottom, which has already been pretty weakened and damaged before, then uh, they might actually get a double key play, which sets them up for a nice early game, a uh, nice late game. They creep forward here, looking for a second keep. 11%. Left on the Dragonite, dropping low. Kaitu's gone deep, has to teleport out with that Hellgate. In comes the Lightning Breath, though. The huge turnaround here. Oh. Vader is down, but they get the triple kill in exchange. That was worth the jimmy as Bruiser forces back. No, they're out of missions, actually. They can't kill the keep. <laughs> they tried using the, tri the Treyarch coming in from Mount Fury. So going way too deep, has to back up here. They tried so hard, but the keep survives. They'll be able to grab it later next Dragon Knight, and they're even going to grab some Siege Giants to try and set up for next after this Mercenary Camp, right? There's going to be a Maybe. Region Globe, and that's all that Kaito needs because of Devil Stew at oh. level 1. Didn't even go for any other talent. Two Globes, and Diablo is back in action. But here we take another replay and look on the great sacrifice of Jim Raynor so his team could clean house here. Bada boom, bada bang. Lee Ming goes with a triple kill. It's reset after reset, and now, as you can see here in the bottom right, they are going to destroy the second keep, and they apparently got more kills done cool. as well. 50 seconds on the Kasi and 56 on Phoenix. We didn't, we didn't even see when that happened, but that is a core right there. No, that it's it's 4v3. It's still risky, but there's two catapults, catapults. with them. Kaidu moving in. Atui gets the scroll of ceiling, focusing down. Nap time on two. It's all up to Li Ming. Burning down Go the core Kaito. right now, doing Bunker. his best. Bunker, that might do it. That might do it. Bunker juggle, and they get it. That is game. And game number one goes to the A-team, but it was not easy. <sighs> that was quite a little something there. For a moment, I thought A-team was not able to actually bring this all the way home. When they looked so strong in the early game, 
they kind of had a couple of weak moments. You know, O'Leary on that Rainer. Don't want to say his positioning yeah. was immaculate there. He had a couple of wonky moments in which he actually got a little too aggressive, in my opinion. Kaitu, I think you could really see how after that early initial feeding on Diablo with a couple of moments where he was totally caught unaware, it really, you know, tackled his confidence. And that's sometimes the case when you play Warrior and you have a couple of unfortunate engages, right? You're starting to get very hesitant. You're starting to get very t intimidated. So uh, building up that fortitude and building up that confidence usually takes a little while. But I think right now, after winning that first game, it's back with Kaitu, and he should be fine for game two. But team not put up quite the fight. Best game we've seen from them in an almost a Much week. Better. So very nice to see here. Seven Milk turns out pretty good Rayleigh. Uh, so no issue with him playing on that uh, solo lane, at least for the moment. At least we get Atui back on the support, which he is very good at. Yeah, Atui definitely made so much of a difference there. Um, they looked like a completely different team. You know, 7 Milk, as you said, pretty okay solo laner there. Actually dominating Blaze for the most time, which is, mind you, not really the hardest thing to do as a Thrall because you are considered to be the better duelist. But still, you know, uh, doing well in that solo lane is definitely nothing to sneeze at, especially with those consistent ganks that were going on. And with that Earthquake, for example, saving him multiple times, you know, it gets not a double thumb up, but a single thumb up. Seven milk. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a single thumb as well. So technically it's a double go. between the two of us. <laughs> Hooray. But for now, with A-Team taking...